Hey everybody, I'm back for a video with 5 tips for modular forest building and forest pathways. The first tip is to keep your templates simple. Anything too big is going to stand out when you start to repeat things, as well as anything too bright. So stuff like crystals or giant rocks or trees that are really, really big are going to start to stick out and your players will be able to see that you've just sort of copy-pasted the same thing over and over again. So keep it small, keep it simple, and decorate each one individually. Don't be too afraid to make them unique, but you don't want anything to stand out as being too large. I try to put one of the unique trees that I outlined earlier in an earlier video on each template, and then I populate it with majority of trees that you can find just in the builder, the basic deciduous or the pine trees and stuff like that, so that when you look at the forest, it looks like it's mostly those with the sort of scattered random special trees in there. I'm doing all of these at six times speed or so, just to speed this video along. My players have just finished all of their time uh, underground that I was talking about earlier. They're about to head down the mountain, out of the dwarven city, leave the dwarves behind, and go into the forest to frolic and probably do a lot of twisted murder things because D&D players are psychopaths. The second tip is to use at least six templates. These took me uh, about two to three minutes each to make. More than six is good, like the more the better, obviously, but we're going for convenience here. I just find six to be the kind of sweet spot where you stop noticing when things repeat, or it's a little bit harder to point out where the repetition is taking place with six or more templates. You can see I start off every one of these templates by laying a basic dirt floor, getting rid of the lines, and then putting in different terrain at the bottom. When you match them up later, you can kind of try to match up those terrain corners with each other, but if, even if you don't, it's still going to look fine, and you're not really going to be able to tell. I use little placement blocks and plants to try and blur the line between the uh, transition in those terrains, but you don't even have to do that, really. A lot of this is not going to be visible to your players. They're not going to see most of this. This is just for, you know, me, I guess. I included this sweeping willow tree in the unique tree video earlier. I hate this thing and I'm probably never making another one of them, even though I think, especially when they're really big, I think it's the coolest looking one. It's just such a pain to make and it definitely took the longest out of the bunch. One thing that you could do if you don't want to make these over and over again is when you have time to just make a handful of them on an empty board because you can copy paste across the whole campaign and even into different campaigns. So maybe that's what I should have done. It's just had a few of these handy that I could just pull in and copy paste. But, you know, I, I was recording and I felt like I should uh, actually do the whole thing on video. I don't know, maybe that was dumb. I'm also just really bad at following my own advice, so even though I say to have stuff ready to copy and paste, I don't have it. I don't have it. So all of this is actually for the very first Dungeons & Dragons campaign I've ever run. I've never done anything like this before, and I don't know about the rest of you, let me know in the comments how you run yours, but I've basically built my story along the lines of like an old Bioware game. If you think of like Knights of the Old Republic or Mass Effect or whatever, where I've given them like an overarching mission where there there's like three or four different places that they are expected to go and a bunch of other places that they could go in between in order to achieve the, you know, ultimate goal of tracking down the big bad or whatever. So I really did lean pretty heavy into Knights of the Old Republic, even for some storyline stuff. So pretty curious how other people do theirs. For example, uh, the last thing my players did was they went into the Dwarven city to help the dwarves with a siege that was going on, and so I created this under the mountain, um, very stereotypical Dwarven city. I modeled the gate after Ironforge from World of Warcraft. Here it is right now. 
I'm actually, I might be a little bit too proud of this thing because I spent way too much time on it. The inside of the city is actually mostly empty because I spent so much time on the gate. But let me know what you're doing with your campaign. If you'd like to see maybe a mountain video, sound off in the comments. Just wrapping up the sixth template here that I'm going to be using for this build for uh, for this video here. That leads us into the third tip, which is to make sure that your lower level is above the bottom of the map. You want to leave space for water. You never know when you're going to want to add a river. You might change plans halfway through, and you want to have that option available without having everything on the ground level and being screwed when you decide you might want to put in some rocks and have a river winding through this. In the nature section of the building blocks, they have these 8x8 eight eight grassland platforms. I like to use those to plan the size of my build, or at least plan a section of it so that I have a, a base to work from. Once I have these laid out, I can easily copy-paste whatever I've put on top of them to make it larger after the fact. So now you can see I'm going to take those six templates that I made, I'm going to put them out, I'll put them in order first, and then I'm going to stagger them, making sure that one template never butts up against itself. Once this is all finished, I'm going to copy-paste the entire block and put it out three more times. So instead of just one of these, I have it in a 4x4 formation, making it a lot larger and giving me a lot more room to work with when I start to put out the roads. Now, I know I said to put it above water to leave space for that. I don't end up putting a river into this, although I might come back to it later and put a river in. It's a lot easier to recycle these maps once I've already made them than to just make a brand new one from scratch every time my players decide they want to go somewhere new. So adding a river, tearing out a strip of this, and replacing a road with maybe a small hill or something like that will be a lot easier. And being able to use sections of this map as a template for something that I might put into something bigger, like when they finally get to this forest city, I can probably even reuse portions of this map or the map itself and just put in buildings and, you know, make it look like a lived-in uh, forest city, like for elves or something. I don't know. My original idea was to have a city threatened by a bunch of undead, but then two of my players decided to be a paladin and a cleric and... They're going to breeze through that way too easily. Now, even though I accidentally deleted the video of me doing it, I actually went ahead of this road and I removed all of the trees and debris after I had made the 4x4 map that you saw me clip together so that I could put the road out in a more natural looking pattern. So that's tip four is clear out roadways after you've put all of the templates together, not before. You can see I have to make a few passes here with these stones, but this is going to be tip five, is to use stones, cliff faces, I use upside down stalagmites for the bricks for your road work. The reason I say this is that the pathway building blocks that they have in that section, they are a little bit too uniform, they look a little bit too like toy-like, and if that's the look that you're going for, that's great. But if you want something that looks like bricks in a road, your stones are going to be your best bet. It takes a little bit more work to put them out there, and you're going to have to make a few passes along each roadway to cover up terrain that might clip through and stuff but I think it's worth it because in the end the product looks a lot better. Just like everything else that I've made, I'm going to put this onto Tails Tavern for you to download so you can, you know, reverse engineer it, see how I did things, or feel free to use it in your own campaign, of course. If you haven't found Tails Tavern yet, it is such a great resource for learning tips on how to do this just by picking apart other people's maps and seeing what they've done. I would suggest that right away. So here you can see me ripping up all of the stuff that I had placed earlier. This is what I was talking about. I deleted the video of me doing this for the first road by accident, but back to tip number four to clear out the pathway before you actually place the road. I decided to put in a little branching pathway here using the same stones and I cleared out all of the trees and debris and stuff like that ahead of time. So you can see that that makes it look a lot more natural, a lot cleaner than if you had had templates where it's like, oh well now this one turns left, but this one is a straight path and now it turns left and it'll start to look a little rigid and samey instead of a sort of winding pathway through the woods like you would expect to see in real life.
All right, so that's the map. I hope you like it. I'm probably going to put a stone border around the outside to make it look like a proper tabletop battle map. Like I said, I'm going to be putting this on Tails Tavern for you guys. I'll put the link for that down in the description. Let me know what you think. If you have found any tips or tricks that you like to use, please let me know what they are. You know, I'm just figuring this out and sharing what I learn as I go. But I would really love to learn from you guys as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.